Do you know what type of graph this is? This type of equation that's being graphed is known as a polar equation. To understand this better, let's discuss the differences between polar graphs and Cartesian, also known as x versus y. For one, the symbols are different. Instead of x and y, polar graphs use r and theta. Like x, theta is an independent variable, and like y, r is a dependent variable. Also, instead of being graphed on a traditional x and y coordinate plane with a square grid, polar equations are graphed on circular planes, like this. Let's take an example. y equals cosine of x and r equals cosine of theta. They seem to be the same, but in reality, their graphs are really different. That's because Cartesian and polar equations are not graphed in the same way. Well, r is the distance away from the origin of the plane, and theta is the angle that the line makes with the axis. What other meaning does the symbol r have in math? Yep, you guessed it, radius. And that is essentially what r represents in a polar graph too. You might be able to see it more clearly through an example. When we graph r equals 10, let's say, this is what we have. And what shape is this? A circle. Because we are assigning the value of r to be the same for all values of theta, it makes a perfect circle with a radius of 10. Still a little confused? Let's go back to our very first example. Let's make x 2 pi. That means y would equal 1. And that is represented by this point on the graph. And for polar, theta would be 2 pi. So r would also be 1. But it's represented differently. Instead of moving across the axis like we do with x, we move to the angle of 2 pi and put a point where the 1 mark is. And remember, 180 degrees is pi, and 360 degrees is 2 pi, which I'll represent on the graph, just to make it really clear. But let's say x was pi. For a Cartesian graph, the value would be y equals negative 1. And theta would also be pi, making r negative 1 as well. On the Cartesian graph, it would be represented by this point. But how do we represent the negative on a polar graph? Well, it's simple. The negative causes the point to go in the opposite direction. So it's essentially going to be at the same point as when theta was equal to 2 pi. Also, when you're graphing a polar equation, you usually should focus on the main angles, such as 30, 60, 90, 180, 45, it's usually easier to find values for these angles, and then all you have to do is just connect the dots. If you still don't get it, don't worry. We're going to do an art project to practice. For this project, you will either need to print out small polar graph templates, which I also included in the description, or make your own. You will also need a pencil and some colored markers. And now, Let's graph r equals 2 cosine of 2 theta. Let's first make a table that includes all the values of r based on theta over the domain of 0 to 2 pi. You do not have to do this every time you graph, but since it's our first one, let's write everything out. Take a minute to pause this video, make your table on your own, and then check your answers with mine. Okay, after plugging these angles into your polar equation, these are the values you should have gotten. Now it's time to graph. Let's plug these values onto our circular polar coordinate plane. Let's look at the first value when theta equals 0, and we see that r should equal 2. Let's put a point there and repeat the same process for the rest of the angles. Also keep in mind that my scale goes by 0.5 instead of 1 to ensure that you guys could see my graph clearly. And ta-da! 
You should have a similar shape to mine. Let's use our colored markers to make this graph into something else. I decided to make mine into a four-leaf clover. Okay, now on your own, graph the following equations. R equals five sine of three theta, and R equals six cosine of four theta. Pause the video and try this on your own. And after you've graphed them, this is what you should have. And the last step is to color them in using our markers. And that brings us to the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. If you want to explore this concept even further, I recommend you check out Desmos and play around with different equations. Also, check out my description for more resources and materials regarding polar graphs. I'll see you next time. Bye!